Ben Graham said the individual investor should act consistently as an investor and not as a speculator. And if you are not an investor, not someone who can predict the future, you should definitely not speculate. Base your decisions on real facts and analysis rather than risky speculative forecasts. Hello and welcome. In today's video, I am analyzing DV's laboratories. The company is engaged in the manufacturing of APIs and intermediates and most of it is uh, export business. Let us look at the core ratios beginning with the market cap at around 1 lakh 2000 crores and if we see uh, 3 years back approximately it was around 16,500. So we see that from 3 years it has gone up multiple x. And even if you look from 5 years back, it was at 23,000 crores and almost 5x more in terms of market cap. So every year, almost it has increased by 100%. So generally, when we are buying as far as, as, far as valuation is concerned, we should look at at least 0.5x of growth rate because we don't want to pay a very high price for a company because uh, if we do that, then the chances of gaining would be reduced. The current price is 3800 and seems to be at its 52 week highest price point of 3800 rupees whereas it had reached around 1600 at the lower end in the last one year. So I would generally buy at at least a 50% drop between its high and low. So uh, say around approximately uh, that would be between 4000 and 1500. So that would be uh, from the top, reduce it by 50% and calculate the price. So that would be the approximate price to buy into this company or at least start buying into the company. Th this is not a fixed benchmark. I can take anything I want, but up to my comfort zone. So I would like at least 50% drop from its highest price. I don't want to buy at the top. The current price to earnings, that is how much are we paying for every one rupee of earning, we are paying around 58.1 times more. That is, we are paying 58 rupees for a one rupee of profits. So this seems to be quite high. Although I have a benchmark of 25 times, we can also look at its average price earning of the last five years where other investors are willing to pay. And then we can decide what we want uh, or how much we want to pay for the company. So as of now, it is quite expensive. As I look into the peer group comparison and uh, I look at its 5 years average and compare it with that as well. Price to book or at least the book value is at uh, 314 rupees per share. Now if you look at uh, and compare it with the current price, this seems to be almost more than 10x. So I don't want to buy into a company where I'm paying 10x more than the book value. 2.53 or its historical 5 and 3 years average that can be taken up as a benchmark. So uh, it depends on individual to individual. This is my benchmark that I have kept. Dividend yield is low as far as current price is concerned. On 3800 they are paying less than 0.5%. So 1% would be around 38. So 19 rupees approximately they are paying uh, or you can expect basically from this current price. Return on capital employed is good at 25.2%. The company's uh, management is basically employing or deploying its capital that they have received either through borrowings as well as uh, through the equity shareholders reserves. And on that they are generating a good EBIT, EBIT, earnings before interest and tax. So on the top line profit is quite good at around 25.2%. This is the latest one. Even the ROE return on equity also that is on the shareholders money how much profits net profits the company has generated that's around 19.2 percent this is also very good anything above 15 percent for both uh, capital employed as well as equity for me is good face value uh, is at around 2 rupees per share so they have done a split five times from 10 rupees which was which it must be initially so basically uh, we have to multiply the current price by 5 
uh, if you want to compare it uh, price wise with other uh, its group companies basically so you multiply this by 5 so approximate price of this company is around 15000 rupees per share price to cash flow like price to earning we should also check how much cash is being generated through the operating activity and against that cash generated what are the price what is the price that we are paying so this is around 84 times more again if we looked at the earnings it was 58 whereas uh, cash wise we are paying around 84 times so this seems to be very high i generally would want the price to cash flow ratio to be less than the price to earnings which would then signify that the company is generating higher cash than the earnings or profits it is declaring in the pnl so this seems to be quite high again here to my benchmark is around 25x or its long term average of 5 and 3 years there we can consider buying return on equity 5 years growth rate uh, basically has seen a degrowth of around 6.3% approximately since from 5 years back so as the company generates more and more profits and those profits get added into the reserves or retained earnings its equity would increase and therefore the company would have to generate or earn higher and higher profits on that increasing reserves so here we want uh, as uh, less degrowth as possible most of the most of the companies would have mild degrowth if it is a positive growth then that would be considered very good the earnings per share or profit per share is around 66 rupees and uh, for that profit we are paying around 58 times that is we are buying that share for around 3850 rupees as of today so this is also quite high as i mentioned earlier book value 223 rupees 3 years back and that has gone up to 314 but if you look at the market cap market cap has gone up almost from 3 years back at 16000 that has gone up almost uh, 6 7x whereas the book value has not gone up that substantially so here we want uh, a measured growth between the market cap as well as the book value both net worth and the market cap both should increase proportionately we already covered the market cap 5 years back total number of equity shares currently in the market is 26.6 crores opm is of of the last 5 years on average was around 35% which is very good i generally like the opm to be around 15% anything above that is good for me but uh, on an average this company is generating a huge opm margins uh, and that would again translate into a good npm as well if we look at the returns over the last one year it's 110% that is the price has gone up by 110% most of the companies have gone up by around 100 1x or 2x or 100% basically or 200% because of the huge fall in the market in april or may till june as well Um, for most of these company from where it picked up again that was due to the covid thing that is a major panic had come up in the market so most of these stocks had fallen at a um, great depth and therefore it had to come up many people bought and they earned a good uh, profits from that from 5 years back it has gone up by 51% that is compounded rate of 51% which is very high return over 5 years also has given a about 25% of cagr so all of these details shows that the company is generating good roe roc and therefore the prices are also going up at a good pace the debt is around 5 crores as of today uh, that is september 2020 in the balance sheet and that has gone down quite substantially in fact it's almost a debt free company now in the preceding year it was 106 crores so we see almost entire debt has been repaid and therefore the interest cost is also very low at 2.38 crores the company is also collecting its payment from its customers at 95 days 
this is above my benchmark of 90 but a uh, little bit up and down it's okay so anytime the uh, company collects its payment uh, late from its customers that's a uh, basically a red flag you don't want the collection days to go high and if we look uh, three years back also it was around 80 days so from that it has gone up now i don't like this uh, ratio where if it's going up then it shows inefficiency of a management in a way but it could also mean that the company has to pay more and more uh, or give more and more credit to its customers so as i mentioned the collection days seems to be have gone a little bit up but that's okay company doesn't have any investments in its balance sheet cash is around 1800 and if we compare this with its balance sheet of 9500 so it's almost like 2000 crores of cash against uh, 9500 of balance sheet total or total assets so this seems to be a little higher but oh, it's okay because the company is holding cash let us also see how much other income it is generating in the PL account against this cash holding trade receivables is 1500 again if we compare this with the balance sheet size we have to look at the percentage as to how much is the trade receivables as a percentage of the balance sheet so let's just calculate that that's around 16.5 uh, percent so this seems reasonable we don't want at least i don't want the trade receivables to exceed 30 uh, percent of the total balance sheet size there should be a balance in terms of how much uh, each asset is occupying as a percentage of the balance sheet now if you don't understand these ratios it's okay uh, but uh, if you want to learn from me you can contact me on my email address and i'll get back to you besides that i have other videos also in which i have explained in detail what each of these ratio means you can check that out also in the description section moving on trade payables is very less at 543 crores almost one third of the receivables so the company is also paying its suppliers on time so this also would indicate a red flag if uh, there's a very high trade payables against the receivables working capital is positive 4500 that is the company has enough cash or working capital to pay off its current liability so this is a good deal we don't want the company uh, not having assets or current assets to pay the current liabilities the net block that is the net assets after accumulate deducting all the depreciation or accumulated depreciation is around 3495 and that has increased by almost uh, say 2x from where it was three years back so the company's assets have increased almost 2x from three years back Whereas if you see as a percentage of the balance sheet size, net block is occupying almost, it's almost occupying more than 30%. My benchmark here is between 30 to 40%. So uh, this is okay because we don't want too many assets in the company because that is basically occupying or blocking the capital of the company. Uh, moving on uh, the company is almost debt free so whatever profit uh, the debt to profit ratio is almost zero that is the company doesn't have any debt to pay or its profits are more than enough to pay whatever debt it has in terms of market cap where the price of the share is against the sales done that's around 16.3 times here my benchmark is between five and six or seven times basically you can keep a little bit up and down or a little bit of margin so 16.3 is quite high for me that is whatever sales it is doing against that we are paying 16.3 times more so this seems to be a little higher so we cannot at least i cannot buy at these kind of valuations although i'm just studying the company to see whenever it comes down i can buy into it wait patiently hold on to the cash and then deploy it whenever i get an opportunity so say around seven times half of what it is right now market cap so whatever the price is divided by two so if it falls around 50 percent that would be a good time to buy into the company profits of the last five years in total is 5793 crores so the company is generating good profits if you see the balance sheet size also against the 9500 crores of the total assets 
over the five years it has generated more than 60 to 70 percent of that uh, assets in terms of profits is that getting converted into cash yes it is 5134 crores so not only is the company showing profits but it is also generating cash and this is what you should i sh i look at whether the company's profits are getting converted into cash free cash out of this 5100 most of the investments that the company is doing in its assets or capital uh, assets or or developing fixed assets is through internal accruals uh, in terms of the free cash flows are around 2100 so it's very good that the company is deploying most uh, almost 50 percent of that uh, into its assets so it's growing but organically in through its internal sources uh, it has also reduced the debt we saw so all of these ratios uh, show efficiency of this company the efficiency of its management basically and if you look at the profit after tax previous year it was around 1353 crores and the current profits are around 1368 crores so we'll ignore both of these right now moving on let us look at the chart of the how the price has moved basically over the years from one year back we see the price was around 1833 and currently it is at 3850 so the price has moved up quite a bit but here too it creates an opportunity it has gone up by almost uh, 50 or 60 percent as we saw earlier also in the core ratios but whenever you find these kind of opportunities you should take take it and uh, deploy your money and if you look from three years back that's from 1100 to almost almost 4000 so 4x whereas from five years back it has gone up from 1100 again same price 1100 to around 3800 so you can divide 3800 by 1100 and get the multiple as to how many x it has gone up but whenever you find these kind of dips you should take opportunity you should take uh, this opportunity and buy into it if you look at the price to earning currently it's at 58 times and the appropriate moment to buy into this is somewhere around 33 times this is the median price earning of the last five years and this is where the opportunity would exist as of when it happened in august 2019 when it dipped below uh, when it dipped at around 29.5 price earning so you take advantage of these uh, dips in in the price to earning whenever it falls below its average that could be a benchmark for us if we look at its performance the o opm margin has been quite high quarter on quarter we see uh, increasing sales or revenue being generated through the uh, many quarters from at least from august 27 where it dipped quite substantially and uh, the latest if we see around september it's around 42 percent of opm and 29.7 percent of npm the sales or the revenues are also increasing so the company is generating good uh, profits on its uh, revenues or sales so that's a good deal let us look at its uh, few of its pros and cons as we saw no debt almost debt free uh, almost 30 percent of its profits has been is being paid out as dividend the sales uh, since last 10 years is growing at around 18.06 percent that's a very high growth rate of sales we want our company's sales to be growing at more than 10 percent at least from five years from three years back stock is very expensive at around 12.28 times its book value and uh, if we see the profit growth rate over the five years is around 11 point rather the sales growth as around 11.6 percent so even this is also very good for me uh, many a times when you have when you expect such high growth rate of 18 percent and if it comes down below that that is considered a con but anything about 10 percent for me is good in the peer comparison i'll compare uh, dvs with a uh, lupin and uh, gland pharma so all of these three companies will cover I'll not look at many of these because then a uh, lot of time will go into it. But if you would want any of these other four companies, then let me know and I'll analyze them separately. So as I mentioned, DVS is at currently at 3,800, 
but uh, earlier when we looked at the face value it was at 2 so we have to multiply this price so if you want to compare the price individually with other companies then you'll have to equalize the face value so one company could be at 10 one company could be at 5 the other could be at 2 and 1 so uh, accordingly you multiply it so that it comes to 10 DB has almost recovered and touching its 52 week highest point less than 0.5 percent away Lupin is down by around 10 percent and Glenn by around 5 percent so almost all of these companies have recovered back Arthi drug is down by almost 28 percent although I'm not taking this company up but just for comparison sake I am seeing whether where the RT is so RT has fallen quite a bit so this creates an opportunity if someone is interested even 17 percent drop although I would like at least oh, 40 to 50 percent drop from its 52 week highest point or whatever the highest it had reached in one year last one year from there 50 percent drop so that's a good time we can say to start our uh, buying or making our strategy the results are up to date for DV and Lupin till September. Gland Pharma hasn't come out with its result. This is a bad sign. We don't want to invest in companies which are delaying its quarterly results. Annually, all three are up to date till March 2020. Sales, if we see quarter on quarter, that is uh, YOI, but quarter on quarter, that is from September 2019 to September 2020. DB has grown its revenues by 21 percent from 1400 to 1700. Lupin has seen a mild degrowth by around 1.2 percent. So it's around 3882 previously. Now it's 3835. So it's quite big, bigger than uh, DB's, almost uh, 2x. Glens uh, is a smaller company compared to the other two at 674 crores but uh, their uh, revenues have gone up by 884 in the current quarter that's a 31 percent growth anytime you see more than 20 percent of growth rate either in sales or profits or any other ratio in terms of growth then it's always best to look at individual values don't de depend on this growth rate because this can mislead you into thinking that the company is growing at a very high growth rate it could also happen this growth rate can be high because previous year it could have generated less sales and now it is more sales so then if you see it in that sense it will of course show you more than 20 percent but don't rely anytime about 20 percent look at individual values in the pnl account in terms of sales growth in terms of profit growth both companies have grown by around 45 and 70 percent a very high growth rate so again as i mentioned check out individual values don't depend on this growth rate this 183 could have fallen in uh, previous September 2019 and now it has increased so then that would not make sense so similarly uh, Lupin has seen a degrowth of almost 40 percent in its profits from its previous year's quarter uh, in fact it's a almost a, uh, in sorry in fact uh, it's it's a, a positive value because uh, previous quarter it was a loss now they are into profits of 211 crores so this value is also misleading so that is why I say check it out individually also if you have that time so although it has turned positive now and that is why also its share price has gone up let's uh, compare the sales of the TTM with March uh, 2020 and then we'll also compare the profits so DVs March 2020 sales were around 5,300 for the entire year ending March 2020 whereas uh, here uh, in the recent 12 months it has picked up further at around 6,265 crores it has done much higher sales than Lupin profit wise uh, DB's uh, profits have also increased from 1,368 in which was in March 2020 uh, to around 1,758 in the recent 12 months Lupin's uh, loss have further increased in the recent 12 month from 470 crores to 670 crores although their sales have dropped quite substantially if you see from 15,000 crores to just sorry uh, from 15,000 crores it has not dropped so qu that substantially but it has seen a mild drop of around 14,977 crores so 
we can see although uh, db is almost one third of lupin yet it is generating profits and lupin is having little bit of trouble generating this the same amount of profits in fact it should also generate almost 3x more profits because it is doing higher sales so this also sh these all of these ratios then shows efficiency of the management or if there is some problem or pressure on the company's uh, sales or products or demand or margins all of these ratios can show you that so that is why it's very important to go through each of them separately gland pharma's sales have been almost flat uh, that is because they have not released the september uh, results that is why it's almost showing the same thing even the profits will show the same thing so we will not be able to compare it here right now let us look at the cash this is very important how much cash my company is generating against the profit it is declaring so 1368 crores of profit declared in 2020 and cash of around 1215 so we should expect at least 80 percent 70 to 80 percent of cash inflows against the profit that the company is showing in its pnl account lupin although has shown a loss of 470 crores in 2020 it's showing a cash of almost 1400 so we don't want such extreme variation between the profits uh, that is uh, from loss to uh, positive cash flows so both have to be positive both have to be somewhere between uh, that is the cash has to be at least 80 percent of the profits so that shows uh, a stability and that is what we should look for not a very huge variations between losses and uh, positive cash flows Glen Farmer's cash inflows are there almost 80%, 90% of its profits declared. So both DB and Glen have done well at least in terms of generating cash. If we look at the price to earning, DB is currently at 58 times. We don't have the P of uh, Lupin because it has, it has made a loss and therefore we cannot calculate the price to earning. Uh, whereas if you look at its average of the last uh, five years at least the lower one it's trading at around 38 times so this is a good time to buy if it does uh, let us look at its current uh, earnings and multiply it by 38.6 so we'll get around uh, its uh, price basically so that would be an approximation and for lupin for dv we can buy somewhere between 29 and 33 the higher or the lower one depending on uh, how what is our comfort zone so the uh, for db at least it has to fall quite a bit so uh, if we look at the current price and look at the current pe so the current price is somewhere around 3849 multiplied by the current price earning so the current price earning is 58 but we want to buy at around 33 times so if we divide this by 33 rather we will have to multiply the eps of uh, the last three years on average price earning with its eps to get the price so even if we calculate the current eps so three eight four nine approximate price that i'm catching uh, divided by the current price earning of 58 so that gives me an eps of 66.36 currently and if i multiply this by 33 i'll get the price of 2189 so i'll have to wait for a price of around 2189 approximately so almost a thousand rupee drop to start buying into the company so this way also you can start buying based on price to earnings so every 1x 2x down you can uh, target uh, of uh, you can accumulate basically at different uh, multiples of price earning if you look at the price to cash also we saw it was quite high at around 84 times so uh, wait for it to fall uh, again near its uh, last five years average this you'll have to calculate manually i don't think uh, screener gives this ratio in its column so this will you will have to do it through its excel sheet or something like that price to book again very expensive at 12.2 times if you look at uh, the lupin's price to book also 3.5 reasonable 
whereas cash price to cash is also at around 30.9 again reasonable around less than 25x is always recommended to buy at that time so it had fallen and there were opportunities in lupin if somebody had taken it the prices had fallen quite a bit in lupin also the price to sales wise again very expensive dv is trading at 16 times its sales i don't want to buy at this multiple six seven times is good enough against the sales lupin is trading at a reasonable three times its sales so this creates an opportunity same with gland pharma very expensive 14 times its sales so if their overall market cap has to drop because either sales has in this case what has happened is the sales must have dropped quite substantially and the price hasn't so therefore the pr uh, price to sales ratio goes up now if the price to sales ratio has to come down then either the market cap has to come down or the sales has to go up one of the two for all of these ratios the same thing has to happen that is the if, if you want a lower multiple the numerator has to drop come down and the denominator has to go up uh, therefore the ratio will decrease or come down price to earnings for gland is very high at 50 times just like db if i look at the profit growth over the five years and three years almost uh, 9.8 and 8.8 percent uh, for db we don't have the growth rate for uh, profits because the company had made losses in the recent uh, year and therefore there is no growth rate calculation here too Glen Pharma's last three years uh, profit growth is around 22 percent so anything about 20 percent check individual values as mentioned earlier sale wise it's around 11 and 9 percent for the five and three years so good value we want a positive growth rate from five years back and from three years back anything about 10 percent is good anything about five percent would be okay Lupin has seen a degrowth in its sales by around almost four percent whereas five years it's still a growth rate but very low mild growth rate so this basically this particular ratio especially is very important as this signifies what is happening in terms of growth in the company how uh, its products whether there's a demand for its product or is it falling so this is the first sign of a problem or trouble if there's a degrowth or if uh, the revenues are coming down because that ultimately affects the profits the cash and everything Glenn's sales are growing by 21 percent over the three years so very high growth rate because the company is a small maybe in terms of net worth so they are able to grow faster but as it grows as it becomes bigger in terms of size their growth rate decreases gradually so both profits and sales are growing about 20 percent return on equity should be above 15 percent over both long term averages as well as in the recent 12 months so 19 percent recent whereas on an average around earning around 20 percent on shareholders money and 18 percent in the last three years so these are good values all values are above 15 percent but uh, lupin has made since that it has made a loss so that is approximately 3.5 percent on shareholders money that it has suffered losses and even long term uh, averages have also worsened has gone down quite substantially to just 1.3 percent uh, over the th three year period that is average and five years also seems very low at 8.6 percent Glenn's uh, return on equity is good at 18 percent over the last three years so this company is generating uh, good profits on shareholders money ROC also is good at around 26 and 30 percent for gland and above 20 percent almost 25 percent for DV so again everything capital employed it is generating good habit on that on all of its source of funding Lupin is low at around 9.7 over the five years it has come down below 15 at around 13.6 percent so uh, definitely Lupin is seeing some kind of margin pressures uh, on its sales on its capital employed equity so all of these uh, ratios show you what kind of problem or problems the company may be going through this is a kind of a sign for us to um, uh, maybe pay more attention towards these companies 
this video may be little bit longer i'd like to cut it out by around 25 minutes max but here i'm going little bit slow in this video because i don't want to rush into analyzing a company and many of you have also told me to go into detail of each company so i'm just doing that return on assets that is the profits on its total assets or balance sheet size we can also use fixed assets here to compare if we can make our own ratio dbs is around 18% on its assets so this is a very good deal and 5 years average is also very high at around 21% there is no benchmark here for me lupin is uh, again a loss lo uh, suffered a loss in the recent year therefore its roi would be negative but on a long term basis also very low at just 6% for glen pharma uh 23% in the recent 12 months so um it is generating a uh, kind of uh, good returns or on its assets this ratio seems a little bit out of uh, number we'll have to analyze this separately asset turnover for all three companies it's somewhere around 0.7 0.8 that is on its total assets employed in the business what kind of uh, sales it is generating so this shows the efficiency on uh, the amount of revenues it is uh, try uh, or it is managing to generate on its uh, on its assets deployed into the business so the higher the better so if it's 1x 2x times it means the company's assets are generating 2x 3x more uh, in terms of sales or revenue so this shows efficiency inventory also we it's for all these three companies the top 3 dv lupin glen is around 1.1 1.6 and 1.3 so the higher the better which shows that the company is holding less of an inventory basically uh, this inventory turnover checks uh, the inventory against the cost of goods sold but i would like to also look at inventory turnover to sales in terms of how much sales it is managing to generate on the inventory holding so uh, this is around uh, sales are around 1.3 times higher than the inventory this again is a very important ratio so don't ignore this inventory turnover because this tells you that if the company is holding a huge inventory then there's something wrong and not managing to do sales so in all of these ratios we are trying to find uh, red flags let us look at the profits of the 5 years both uh, dv and lupin generating around 5000 and above crores of profits whereas in terms of cash lupin has generated higher cash of 8600 so this shows a uh, efficiency or a uh, reality as to whether the profit is getting converted into cash even dv is also generating cash against the profit declared In fact, all three companies have generated cash against their profits. So, on a long-term basis, at least it should be positive, or at least 80% of the profits, that is the cash inflows from operating activity, should be at least 80% of the profits. So, it seems all of these companies are generating uh, substantial cash against the profits. In terms of free cash flow, 50%. of its cash over the last 5 years has been deployed back into the business so uh, although we don't want it to be very high this seems okay 50% of its cash generated redeployed back into buying assets or growing so this is a good sign because we also saw that the net profits are increasing uh, roes are good roc is good debt is very less so then this becomes a very good uh, sign or shows up a very good sign that the company is growing in organically through its internal sources and that's a good sign lupin free cash flows are almost equivalent to its cash flows and almost 1000 uh, crores of that has been used up in buying asset but it's a very small portion when we look at uh, that is it shows that there's hardly any deployment in its fixed assets now it is in the last 5 years and most of it is it is holding in terms of cash so when we when we see it in this sense we see that there is no growth at least 
uh, we see i see growth in the terms of deployment in more and more capital assets so th that is the first sign that the company is buying more assets why would it do that because it sees growth in the future so it will buy more plants or do acquisition or increase its uh, fixed assets basically whereas grand farmers uh, free cash is around 1000 crores so this is also a good portion of so this also would mean that the company is deploying its capital judiciously carefully gradually and that is what we want we don't want a very haphazard investments in assets by our company or their management if we look at the five years average pat 1100 crores for dvs 1000 for lupin and 454 crores for glen pharma so all of these companies are generating positive average profits after tax market cap for dv is around 1 lakh crores very high we earlier saw net worth is just 8300 crores so that's a very high multiple of almost uh, 11 times lupin 12000 crore company now trading at around 45000 so 12 fours are 48 approximately so 4x or so or 3.x some x uh, for lupin price to book wise and this uh, glen pharma is uh, trading at almost 10x from 3900 to 38000 crores so less than 10 per 10x but very high the for even for glen pharma so both uh, dv and glen are trading at a uh, high premium to its book value now book value is basically the value of each share as per the company's books or what the company has determined what its shares are worth vis-a-vis -vis, uh, market cap which is uh, the value given to each share by the investors in the market or what they think the value of each share is as per their opinion contingent liability for all of these three companies is a very small portion it should not be more than 20 percent of its net worth these liabilities can arise in the future and then that can reduce profits if it does arise now these liabilities are not shown in the balance sheet so we have to be more careful that they don't exceed 20 percent of the net worth all these three companies are debt free lupin has taken a point two times debt against its equity so although even then also it's quite less so therefore uh, these companies would have an interest coverage of more than four times which means that their earnings before or profits before interest and tax paid would be four times higher than the finance cost or the interest cost that they paid so we want at least 4x more EBIT than the interest that the company is paying promoter holding is good for all three lupins promoter holding is 46 less than 50 percent or even then it is quite significant and the good thing is none of these promoters have pledged any of their shares debtors to sales ratio has exceeded by uh, uh, 30 percent which is my benchmark for lupin i don't like the debtors to sales ratio to cross 30 percent which means basically that the collection or accounts receivables or the collection that the company has to do from its customers against the current year's sales has exceeded 30 percent now let's say if they have done a sales of one lakh and against that thirty thousand is still pending to be collected from the customers so that's a thirty percent so till thirty percent is good enough when anything above that means that the company is doing a high credit sales now DB is taking around 95 days to collect that 25 percent pending from its customers whereas lupin is giving 130 days this is not a good sign we don't want the data days to go up or accounts receivable days or collection days to go up more than 90 days that shows inefficiency or some kind of pressure on the company to give more credit to its uh, customers so that they can at least buy now and pay later but then that's not a very good sign and that that shows some kind of manipulation going on in the company to declare higher and higher sales or revenues but this is not how we want our companies to 
increase their revenue. We want to gradual increase, but also collect payment from the customers when it is due, or collect it at least within, uh, say, a reasonable time period. At least 90 days, three months is a good time to collect payment. Glen Pharma, 83 days collected, uh, collecting within 83 days, and 25.6 percent to be collected. So, all of these three companies have seen quite a high customer or debtors from whom they have to collect payment and they are all nearing their bench uh, nearing my benchmark which is uh, 30 percent and 90 days net profit margin for both gland pharma and db is high at about 25 percent lupin has suffered a loss last year of around three percent in terms of dividend yield none of these companies are paying a substantial dividend they are all one less than one percent so not uh, uh, worth of as a dividend investment decision. If we look at their sales growth rate from 10 years back, 5 years back, 3 years back for DV, that's uh, above 10% of growth rate in revenue or sales. Whereas profits are also double digit at least till last 5 years and 10 years. In the recent 3 years it has gone down but it's still quite high, uh, even 9% is considered good. The price or uh, the value of our shares have been compounding at more than 28% since last 10 years. The last 5 years again 28%. In the recent 3 years it has in, in fact gone up quite high at around 51%. Now this is a good sign for people who have already bought. But for people who want to buy like now, this is not a very good time to invest because the compounding of the value of each share is very high and uh, anything at uh, its long term average of around 28% compounding would be a good sign. So you can do a reverse calculation and arrive at what price uh, when it is 28% growth rate from 3 years back. So take the value of or the price of the share 3 years back ap approximately and compound it by 28% for the next 3 years and that would be the time to buy into the share. So if I have to calculate it so the price uh, three years back was around 1187 and that is compounding at 28 percent which is uh, 1519 plus 28 percent is equal to 1944 and one more 28 percent which is 2489. So this is the price that one can target to start uh, our entry because based on the long term average of around 28% from 3 years back it should be somewhere around 2489 whereas currently it is at 3849. So again it is very similar to the price earning that we calculated earlier where we saw how the uh, uh, where we should actually buy around 1000 rupees less. ROE over the last 10 years all of them are above 15 percent so this is also a good sign. If you look at the shareholding pattern the promoters are holding around 51 percent FIIs and DIIs are around 18 and 18 percent each as of September 2020. We see quite a stability in terms of holding by these guys and uh, public is just 10 percent so I like when public is less than the combined uh, shareholding of FIIs and DIIs. This is a very good time or at least this is a very good uh, place to invest because we do not want public to be holding a huge portion of the shareholding against the promoters, FIIs and DIIs. At least combined together by FIIs and DIIs, public should be less and this is a good, most of the companies you will see public is not holding a substantial portion uh, against the FIIs and DIIs. It is not an exact case but most of them are like that and this is where I like to invest in these kind of companies because these guys are very intelligent FIIs and DIIs and they do extreme uh, research into company before putting their money because those are in crores and they would not just uh, invest ideally without mm, talking to the management or looking at the business model how the sales are growing. These guys also have uh, CAs and chartered accountants and uh, what not um, and huge resources to study the company before they deploy their money into the So as far as uh, fundamental analysis is concerned, I am done with that. I will just look at the technical chart 
based on the RSI that I follow to see where all uh, opportunity would exist for DB, where all we can buy separately looking at the chart. So let's check out that first. When I look at the chart of DV, I see that there is hardly any buying opportunity in this. So uh, anytime it falls below 35 in terms of RSI, that was the only time to buy into this company. And that was long time back in 2016. And I had invested during this time when there was some kind of uh, news about the company where the US FDA had uh, applied some sanctions on them. Uh, and therefore the price had fallen quite significantly and you have to take opportunity in these kind of uh, situations and buy into the company not buy a very high although even this was high but even then also it has gone up quite significantly and therefore if you had bought here that's okay because the price has gone up but you can't buy now it's quite high it can go further up also from here on not to say that it won't but at least I would not like to take that risk of buying at the top many times many people would even buy here as well and take that risk but I don't see that kind of opportunity or that kind of compulsion to buy into this company as of now so I would wait patiently for it to drop at least below uh, RSI 50 in terms of the red one because that's the trend you can see here every time it drops you can take that opportunity of buying into the company this is a weekly chart and uh, that you have to keep in mind based on that I don't see actually any opportunity but fundamentally we saw if we take an RSI uh, somewhere around 3000 would be a good time that's a support again this is a support again this would be considered a support kind of a support so all of these are buying opportunities still till the rsi comes down so we can take the help of the support to buy at multiple levels if you are interested in this company for long term so i guess uh, this completes my uh, detailed analysis of the company if you have any questions or queries or doubts about this analysis or if I have missed out something do let me know in the comment section and uh, if the video is too long then you can fast forward it and watch it having said that if you enjoyed watching it do consider subscribing if you haven't and share it with your friends thank you very much for taking time out to watch this video. Appreciate. Have a nice day.